Okay, so um, my name's Sonam and I'm going to be giving a presentation on George A. Akerlof's paper on the market for lemons, quality, uncertainty and the market mechanism. First, I'm going to explain what we're going to be talking about in this presentation. I'm going to explain the main concepts of Akerlof's paper. Then I'll go on to explain an automobiles example that he uses to explain the lemons market. And then I'll explain asymmetric information in the market. Then I'll go on to explain the model and some examples and implications of the lemons market. And then I'll conclude the presentation. So before I start, I'll explain some main concepts in Akerlof's paper. Akerlof uses asymmetric information as a big concept in his paper, which is where information is not evenly distributed between all parties, leading to either moral hazard or adverse selection. This gives rise to the lemons problem where there is asymmetric information between the buyer and the seller in an investment or a product. A lemon can be, a lemon can be said to be a product in a particular market which is defective, such as a car which is defective in an automobiles market. This gives rise to the problem of quality uncertainty. Akerlof uses the phrase the bad drives out the good in a lot of the, a lot of the examples in his paper. Let's move on to the automobiles example now. Here I have, for simplicity's sake, four types of cars. We have new, car, new good cars, used good cars, new lemons, and used lemons. Now, the value of a used car cannot equal the value of a new car, because if this were true, arbitrage would be possible. Arbitrage is where a costless, riskless profit is made. And so we could buy a used car in a market for used cars and sell it in the value in the market for new cars and make this costless versus profit. Now, this gives rise to asymmetric information because the average quality of the cars can now be only used as the best estimate of the value of the car to test if it is either a good or a, or a lemon. Now, if buyers are only willing to pay the given average quality of the car and at this price, owners of good cars will make a loss as the quality of the good car is greater than the price that the buyers are willing to pay. So this reduces the average quality of cars in the market as a whole. Because of this, buyers' expectations are revised downwards and no good cars are going to be sold in the market, so the bad dries out the good again. This is similar to the analogy by Gresham's Law, where Gresham's Law states that bad money dries out the good in a market where the exchange rate is set by the law. So asymmetric information is a big problem because it means that no goods will, will be traded in the market effectively because only average quality goods are going to be considered and the bad will drive out the good cars in the market. Other situations which Akerlof describes to describe the lemons problem is in the market for insurance and the employment of minorities. An implication of the lemons market is the cost of dishonesty. I'll go on to explain these concepts in a little while. So the model is given here where I have a table and I've denoted Q as quality and Q follows a normal distribution so that in this normal distribution we have the average quality as given as a half. With symmetric information, Q is observable because we know the quality of that car. So the price of used cars are going to be between Q and 3 over 2Q. And cars can be sold in the market. There will be trade of cars in that market. However, with asymmetric information, we can't observe the quality of Q. Of, we can't observe Q. So this means that we have to use the average quality to estimate the price of Q. The willingness for buyers to pay now becomes 3 over Q average. And the equilibrium price is now denoted as P, where P is greater than zero. P also follows a normal distribution, and which means that the average will be P over 2. So if we substitute the value of Q average as P over 2 into this willingness to pay function, <coughs> we get 3 over 2 Q average equal to 3 over 2 Q times P over 2, which is 3 quarters P. Now this is the price that buyers are only willing to pay for this car. This is the average price. Since the quality of the car will be greater than the average price, no cars will be sold at P because the owners of good cars will not want to sell their cars at a lower price than, they, than they're worth. So the market for automobiles collapses. 
Some examples and implications by Akerlof used to show the lemons market include insurance. Now, this is where we have an insurance example with, um, as a medical example, where the average medical condition of insurance applicants decrease as the price increases because no insurance sales will take place. And this means, this is similar to how, in a used car analogy, that the average quality of the car decreases as the price increases. <coughs> it's difficult for elderly people to therefore purchase insurance because people over 65 will find it difficult to, will find the premiums too high to buy insurance. So only the most pessimistic people will purchase insurance at this price. This is adverse selection again. Here are some statistics to support Akalos analogy. Now, insurance companies are fully aware of adverse selection in the market, and that, and these are the, the three factors which affect whether there is adverse selection in the market. If the applicant has the choice whether to buy or not to buy insurance, or the amount or the plan of insurance, or to continue or discontinue a policy, there could be adverse selection in the insurance market. Now, where do insurance companies do their own adverse selection? In the United States, we know that you can get group insurance and employers will only hire healthy applicants because it's like a sufficient condition to be healthy when you're employed. So this means that they're doing their own advert selection because only the healthy applicants are hired and that group insurance for, those, for that group will be for healthy people, therefore leaving out the unhealthy people and the least healthy people which need the most cover. Another example is in the employment of minorities. Um, firms are driven by profit maximisation and they tend to sometimes leave out ethnic minorities and not hire them, not because of prejudice, but because they cannot distinguish between applicants with good qualifications and applicants with bad qualifications. Therefore, this is difficult for them to know which ones to hire. So they tend to leave them out. cost of dishonesty is an implication of the Lemons model, where Akerlof quotes that dishonest dealings tend to drive out honest dealings, tend to drive honest dealings out of the market. Here I've put cost of dishonesty as a function of the amount by which the purchaser is cheated, plus the loss incurred from driving legitimate business out of existence. To conclude the, the presentation, I have another quote from Akerlof, trust is important. With, without trust in the market, we have quality uncertainty and it is very difficult to distinguish the good from the bad, which is a very real problem in economic institutions and gives rise to the problem of adverse selection. The bad drives out the good. Thank you for listening.